Okay, what we're going to be doing now is determining how fast a roller coaster car going down the top thrill dragster will reach when it hits the bottom. Okay, according to the website, the top thrill dragster um, is over 130 meters tall, but the actual drop is 120 meters. So here's the top, here's the bottom, and to go from the top to the bottom is a vertical drop of 120 meters. So when we're determining the overall speed reached, we need to know that the vertical drop is 120 meters. Okay, so here we go. Here's our top. At the top of the hill, the total mechanical energy is going to be a combination of EG, which is gravitational potential energy, and EK, which is kinetic energy. And we're going to assume that the roller coaster cart at the very top is at rest, even just for a split second. So if it's at rest for a split second, that means there's not going to be any kinetic energy. So kinetic energy will obviously go to zero. And the total mechanical energy of the system with a cart at the top is going to be equal to mgh plus zero because there's no kinetic energy. And we don't have to worry too much about the mass of the cart because we'll see in a little while that it really doesn't matter for this calculation. At the bottom, total mechanical energy is still a combination of gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy if you reach the bottom of the hill and there's no height left, you have no gravitation potential energy, so that's now going to be the zero. So the total mechanical energy at the bottom is going to be all kinetic energy or one half mv squared. So, once again at the top, total energy of the system, total mechanical energy is going to be equal to just gravitational potential energy or mgh. We know g, it's gravity, we know h, which is the total drop was 120 meters, but again don't worry about the mass. At the bottom of the hill, we can't go any further down, so the total energy of the system is just going to be the kinetic energy or one half mv squared. The V is actually the thing that we're looking for, which we will solve for. And again, we don't know what the mass of the card is, so you'll see in a second how that doesn't really matter. So let's make a little room. So total energy needs to be conserved. Whatever energy I start with, I have to end with. So that means the energy at the top has to be equal to the energy at the bottom. So EG at the top has to equal EK at the bottom or mgh is equal to one half mv squared. Now here's where we can start canceling out the masses. You've got the same mass on either side, they just cancel out. And that's why it doesn't matter what the mass of the card is or the mass of the number of people that are in it. It will not matter for this calculation. So now we're left with gh equals one half v squared. Make a little bit more room. And we want to rearrange this equation to solve for V. So V equals, just multiply both sides by 2, we'll get 2, so that's V squared, so 2GH. Okay, so we want to solve for V. V is simply going to be the square root of 2 times G times H. G is 9.8 meters per second squared, and height, which is the overall height it can fall, is 120 meters. So do all the multiplication under the root sign, and we get V is equal to the square root of 2,352, and we just take the square root of that, make a little room. So 
So the speed at the bottom of the hill, assuming there's no resistance or friction or anything like that, or wind resistance, should be 48.5 meters per second. So a cart going from the top to the bottom should reach a speed of 48.5 meters per second. Okay, the way this ride actually works, you start at the bottom, and there is a device which pushes the cart, it gives it an initial speed, which gets it just to the top of the hill, and then it comes down on the other side. So there's your starting point. All of your speed has to be given at that point right there. There's no mechanism after that in order to get you to the top. So what we want to do is figure out um, what is the speed that you have to have at the bottom in order for the cart with all the people to just make it to the top and then come down the other side. So this is called the principle of reversibility. It is very similar to what we just did. In fact, we're going to find out the numbers are the same. We're going to deal with the energy at the bottom and energy at the top. Okay, so here we go. We want to figure out what speed do you need here. So total energy of the system is going to be a combination of gravitation potential energy and kinetic energy. Uh, you're at the bottom of the hill, which means there is no height, so EG goes to zero. When we get to the top, we will assume again that this roller coaster stops for a split second, so the total energy will be a combination of EG and EK, but if the cart stops for a split second, that means there's no kinetic energy. So whatever energy we start with, we have to finish with. So the energy from the top and the bottom should be equal to each other. So EG at the top is going to be equal to the EK at the bottom. So gravitational potential energy at the top is MGH. Kinetic energy at the bottom is 1 half MV squared. Uh, we've got the same mass on either side. Once again, we cancel them off. We're going to rearrange this all for V. So multiply both sides by 2. So we got 2GH is equal to V squared. Take the square root of both sides, and we get two, square root of 2GH is equal to V. Let's make a little room. So, solve for V, we're going to take the square root of 2 times 9.80 times 120, which is the overall height of the fall. You'll notice this looks like what we just did about a minute ago. V is equal to the square root of 2,352. We take the square root and we get 48.5 meters per second. Okay? What that means is, if you were at the bottom of the hill and you were given a kick, a speed of 48.5 meters per second, you would just make it to the top of the hill, which makes sense because if you're at the top of the hill and you come down, you will reach a total speed of 48.5 meters per second. It works the same both ways, and it does not matter what your mass is. It is mass independent.